What's up guys? My name is Ryan and I've spent most of my life living in the United States and I want to show you my favorite places. So here is my USA Top 100. I have to say the USA is the most diverse country in the world from the barren deserts of the southwest the Caribbean coast of Puerto Rico, the USA has it all. Now this video is going to be a long one, so I made timestamps of all the places in the description so you can jump around to your favorite destinations. Let's start this video off on the Hawaiian island of Kauai. Of all the Hawaiian islands, Kauai is the oldest, making it the most beautiful and diverse. It's nicknamed the Garden Island, and when you go there, you'll understand why. One of my favorite places is the Nepali coast. There are very few places in the world, if any, that match the beauty of this coastline. The Nepali coast is filled with sea cliffs that rise 3,000 feet from the ocean, contrasted with deep, narrow valleys that empty to the sea below. There are several ways to experience the Nepali coast. One of the best ways is by helicopter. It can be a little bit pricey, but you'll be able to get some of the best views of Nepali's coastal cliffs and valleys. One of the most fascinating Hawaiian islands to me is Molokai. It's definitely one of the lesser known Hawaiian islands, but I have to say it has some of Hawaii's most incredible scenery. One of my favorite features is Molokai's sea cliffs. They are the tallest in the world, with some being almost 4,000 feet high. There's also stunning waterfalls tucked away in the island's lush canyons, and just like Kauai, I'd say one of the best ways to see Molokai would be from a helicopter flight. I mean, you'll be able to witness the island's raw beauty. Now, after Hawaii, we're gonna head up to Alaska. When you think of untamed wilderness, Alaska is it. I mean, it's just a land full of some of the world's biggest mountains and glaciers, and it's one of the few places in the USA where you can see the Aurora Borealis. Now, one of the most wild places in Alaska is the Aleutian Islands. I think this may be one of the most incredible destinations in all the US. Now, located in the Bering Sea, the Aleutian Islands are made up of around 300 islands with over 57 volcanoes. My friend Viktor Poznov recently took a trip here and made an amazing one hour documentary of his journeys. And I'll link it in the description below. Now the landscapes here remind me of Iceland with its volcanic terrain and harsh sea. Not only is this place beautiful, but it's full of history. During World War II, Japan landed and occupied two of the Aleutian Islands, making it the only invasion on US soil during World War II. I mean, this place just honestly blows my mind. If you ever want a true adventure, you gotta visit these islands. Now, after Alaska, let's head over to the complete opposite side of the country to visit Puerto Rico. Now, located in the Caribbean next to the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory and is home to tropical landscapes and scenic beaches. The capital of Puerto Rico is San Juan and was founded by Spanish colonists back in 1521, making it the oldest European established city in the U.S. I went to Puerto Rico a few years ago and just had a great time exploring all the waterfalls and doing some epic cliff jumping. I definitely want to come back and visit this upcoming year. Now right next to Puerto Rico is another U.S. territory called the U.S. Virgin Islands. The territory is made up of around 50 islands with the three major ones being St. Croix, St. John, and St. Thomas. The U.S. purchased these islands from Denmark back in 1917 for $25 million. I mean, that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. Now, today, the Virgin Islands are an excellent place to go if you want to experience some Caribbean scenery. After, we're going to head over to California to visit Lake Tahoe. I have to say that it's my favorite lake in the USA. Located right on the Nevada and California border, Lake Tahoe is the second deepest lake in America with a depth of over 1,600 feet, I mean, which is absolutely massive. What I love about this lake is how clear the water is, I which mean, is such a stunning blue color. It's also famous for having smooth granite rocks that peek out of the water. Now, a great place to go is Sand Harbor Beach. It's full of clear water and tons of Lake Tahoe rocks. It's an ideal place to swim and paddleboard. If you do go, I'd recommend visiting in July or August so the water can warm up a little. After, we're going to head over to Yosemite National Park. Now, located about a four hours drive from Lake Tahoe, Yosemite is one of the most stunning national parks. It's famous for its massive granite cliffs, clear streams, and powerful waterfalls. One of the coolest features of the park is Half Dome. It's this gigantic piece of granite that rises over 5,000 feet from the valley below. One side is a sheer cliff while the other half has the appearance of a rounded dome. One of the most famous waterfalls in the park is Yosemite Falls. It's one of the world's tallest with its upper falls being 1,430 feet high. Now after we're going to visit Mount Whitney. 
Now located about two hours away from Yosemite in the Sierra Nevada mountain range, Mount Whitney is the highest peak in the lower 48 states with a height of 14,505 feet. Now right below Mount Whitney is the uniquely shaped Alabama Hills. They are home to some of the coolest rock formations with endless rounded boulders you also get incredible views of Mount Whitney and the Sierra Nevadas from there. Now after, we're gonna head over to the coast to visit San Francisco. Now I think of all the major cities in the US, San Francisco is one of the most beautiful. It's built upon a peninsula surrounded by the Pacific Ocean and San Francisco Bay. What I love about San Fran is all its attractions. You have the famous Painted Lady Houses and the notorious Alcatraz Island that used to be a maximum security prison. Now the most iconic attraction of San Francisco is is the Golden Gate Bridge. It's possibly the most photographed and famous bridge in the world. It was built back in 1937 and at its time it was the longest and tallest suspension bridge with a span of 4,200 feet and a height of 746 feet. Now the red colored still against the scenery of San Fran creates an incredible sight no matter what time of day. Now from San Francisco we're going to head over to Big Sur. Now located on the Pacific 101 highway, Big Sur is one of America's most scenic drives known for its winding turn seaside cliffs and views of the misty coastline one of the coolest places in Big Sur is the Bixby Creek Bridge it's one of California's most photographed bridges and you'll understand why when you get there Big Sur is also home to Mickway Falls which is an 80 foot waterfall that falls onto the beach below if you keep driving south on the 101 it'll take you to this elephant seal vista point it's this beach filled with thousands of elephant seals they're some of the largest and weirdest animals I've ever seen Depending on what time of year you go there, they may be sleeping on the beach or fighting to the death. Pretty crazy animals. Another incredible place in California is Catalina Island. Located about 20 miles off the coast of Los Angeles, Catalina is part of the Channel Island Archipelago. You can get there by taking an hour ferry from California's mainland. When you arrive, you can experience the city of Avalon. It's the only city on the island and offers a beautiful bay and surrounding scenery. While you're in Catalina, you can hike on its numerous hiking trails across the island and maybe even venture to the westernmost tip where the Apple Mac OS picture was taken. Now while we're still in California, we're going to visit the California Redwoods. Now the Redwoods are the tallest trees in the world with the highest reaching 379 feet tall. There are groves of Redwoods scattered along the Northern California coast. And there are plenty of places to see them. I went to the Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park we explored the grove and I was just blown away by the size of the trees. Not only were the trees amazing, but just the whole ambience of being there. The trees pretty much blocked out all sunlight and then the ground was covered in these ferns that made it feel like you were in a Jurassic Park film. I mean, such a magical place. Now after exploring California, we're gonna make the drive up to Oregon. Now I have to say that Oregon is one of my favorite states. It's home to massive volcanoes and countless waterfalls. Oregon is home to some of the best coastline in the USA. I highly recommend just driving down the 101 Coastal Highway. One of my favorite stops was this place called Meyer Beach. It had these massive rocks and we had the beach all to ourselves. Another scenic spot is the Samuel H. Boardman Scenic Corridor. It's one of the most beautiful spots on the Oregon coast in my opinion. If you keep driving up the coast, you'll reach Cannon Beach. When you think of Oregon, you might think of this spot. I remember first seeing this beach on Steven Spielberg's movie, The Goonies, and I've wanted to go there ever since. It's famous for its haystack rock. It's this massive 235 foot sea stack that shoots out of the ocean. In 2013, it was listed as one of the world's 100 most beautiful places by National Geographic, and I totally understand why. Afterwards, we're going to head over to the other side of the country to visit Washington, D.C., formerly called the District of Columbia. Washington, D.C. is the capital city of the U.S. and is located right on the Potomac River. It's home to the White House and some of the most important memorials and monuments. One of my favorites is the Washington Monument. It's a 500-foot tall stone obelisk that was completed all the way back in 1884 and was built to honor George Washington. I mean, it just blows my mind they were able to build it back then. Now after, we're gonna head over to nearby Baltimore. Now located about an hour's drive from Washington DC, Baltimore is the capital of Maryland and is built on the Patapsco River, which empties into Chesapeake Bay. Baltimore was established as a town in 1729 and during the War of 1812, the Battle of Baltimore took place where the British fell to bombard Fort McHenry, which led to Francis Scott Key riding the National Anthem 
Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, some pretty fascinating history. Now after Baltimore, we're going to head over to Atlantic City. Now located on New Jersey's coast, Atlantic City is famous for its casinos, beaches, and iconic boardwalk. I guess you could call it the Las Vegas of the East Coast. Now from New Jersey, we're going to make the short drive over to New York City. With its massive skyscrapers, diverse cultures, and hustle and bustle atmosphere, it's a place that needs to be experienced. I was fortunate enough to live in New York for a few months and the city lifestyle quickly grew on me. One of my favorite places in the city is the Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge is one of the most photogenic places in all of New York. It's this massive bridge that connects the boroughs of Brooklyn to Manhattan. The bridge was finished in 1883 and it's become one of New York's most popular attractions. Probably the most iconic monument, not just in New York, but the entire country, is the Statue of Liberty. This 151 foot tall copper statue was gifted to the people of the US by France. The statue depicts a Roman liberty goddess as she holds a torch and tablet inscribed with July 4th, 1776 in Roman numerals. I mean, I'm just blown away that they were able to construct this. It makes you wonder how it must have made early immigrants feel when they reached the US. What a powerful monument for America. Now after exploring New York City, we're going to head over to the nearby region of New England. Now located in the northeastern part of the US, New England is comprised of Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Maine. New England is one of the most historical regions in the US. It's where the Pilgrims settled in 1620, and it's also where the Revolutionary War was born. I mean, just such a fascinating region. The most populous city in New England is Boston. Located in the state of Massachusetts, Boston is one of the oldest municipalities in the US, founded in 1630 by the Puritan settlers. Historical events such as the Boston Tea Party took place during the Revolutionary War here. Today, Boston is a thriving city, home to universities such as Harvard and MIT. A great place to visit outside the city is Martha's Vineyard. Now located about a two and a half hours drive from Boston, Martha's Vineyard is an idyllic island with picturesque seaside views. The island was first settled in 1657 and today is a popular summer colony. I really like the area around Egertown. There's just some beautiful lighthouses to explore there. The famous movie Jaws was filmed here. Hopefully there aren't too many great white sharks in the water. Now after, we're gonna head over to the state of Rhode Island. Now while it is the smallest state in the US, it sure makes up for its small size with its beautiful scenery and history. One of my favorite places in Rhode Island is Newport. It's famous for its coastal mansions that were built in the late 1800s. Now from Newport, you can make the hour drive to the seaside village of Mystic. Now located in Connecticut, this charming village is built right where the Mystic River meets the Atlantic Ocean. It was founded back in the 17th century and has been an important seaport with many ships being built here. Today it's an idyllic place and definitely one of Connecticut's most beautiful villages. Now if you want to escape the city and see some nature, I suggest going to Vermont. This may be one of the best places to visit during fall. The trees turn to unbelievable red, orange, and yellow colors. Vermont is also home to historical towns such as Brattleboro. Now another one of my favorite states in New England is Maine. Maine is the northeasternmost point in the US as it borders Canada. It's famous for its scenic coastline filled with lighthouses and lobster shacks. One of my favorite cities in Maine is Portland. It's a charming city on Maine's coast. It was first settled in 1623 by European settlers. Today it's known for its old port district and harbor. One of the coolest places is the Portland Head Light. It's a historic lighthouse that was built all the way back in 1791, making it the oldest lighthouse in Maine. Another beautiful place in the state is the Acadia National Park. Acadia is mostly located on the Mount Desert Island. The national park is full of granite peaks, rocky coasts, and tons of beautiful trees. I have to say it's one of the most impressive national parks on the East Coast. After, we're going to head back to New York to visit Lake Placid. Located in the northern part of the state, Lake Placid is an extremely beautiful area and has hosted two Winter Olympics. I mean, it would be a great place to come during autumn to experience those fall colors. While you're here, you can kayak on the lake or you can drive up to Whiteface Mountain to get incredible views of the whole area. Now afterwards, we're gonna head up to the Canadian border to visit Niagara Falls. This is possibly the most famous waterfall in the USA. It's made up of three waterfalls, with the largest being Horseshoe Falls, which is considered to be the most powerful waterfall in North America. It has a height of 167 feet and lies right on the US-Canadian border. 
Now afterwards, we're gonna head over to the nearby Great Lakes. They're made up of five connected lakes. And they are the largest group of freshwater lakes in the entire Rild. It's hard to grasp the size of them. Because they are so huge, they have sea light characteristics such as waves, strong currents, and endless horizons. They honestly feel like a freshwater ocean. A lot of US major cities are built on the shores of the lake. One of my favorites is Chicago. Now located in Illinois on the shores of Lake Michigan, Chicago is famous for its bold architecture and massive skyscrapers. It almost looks like Chicago is built on the ocean with the massive Lake Michigan as its backdrop. I came here a few years ago for a Coldplay concert and I really enjoyed the city. One of the most famous features of Chicago is the Bean Sculpture. It's a giant kidney shaped mirror that was opened in 2006. Another cool thing I like about the city is how the Chicago River runs right through it. Now afterwards, we're going to head over to Wisconsin to visit Milwaukee. Now like Chicago, Milwaukee is built right on Lake Michigan. It's honestly a really beautifully set place. It's the largest city in Wisconsin and it's famous for its beer and breweries thanks to its German immigrants who came here in the 19th century. After Wisconsin, we're going to head down to the Lake of the Ozarks. Now located in the heart of Missouri, the Lake of the Ozarks is a massive reservoir and is one of the most popular places in Missouri. It will definitely make you reminisce on Netflix hit series Ozarks. Even if you're not into money laundering, this is a wonderful place to visit during the summer to enjoy the lake. One cool spot there is the Hahatonka Castle. It was once a hotel and got burnt down and its ruins remain today. Now while we're still in Missouri, we're going to visit Kansas City. Now this city is a little odd because there are two Kansas cities, one in Missouri and one literally right next to it in Kansas. Anyways, it's home to sports teams such as the Royals and Chiefs. One of my favorite parts of the city is the National World War I Museum. It really is a beautiful memorial, perfectly placed to overlook the Kansas City skyline. Now another impressive city in Missouri is St. Louis, commonly known as the Gateway to the West. St. Louis is the second largest city in the state after Kansas City. One of the coolest features of the city is the Gateway Arch. It's the world's tallest arch with a height of 630 feet and was built to honor the westward expansion of the United States. After Missouri, we're going to head down to Texas. Known as the Lone Star State, Texas is the second largest state in the nation after Alaska. I think one of the best cities in Texas is Austin. If you listen to Joe Rogan, you'll know that Austin is a great place. It's famous for its great food music and venues. I mean overall just great vibes in the city. Now another really cool place outside of Austin is the Hamilton Pool and it's this natural pool that's located underneath a overhang cliff. I mean it's a perfect place to cool off on a hot Texas day. Another really cool spot in Texas is the Palo Duro Canyon. It's located in the Texas Panhandle and the canyon is the second biggest in the country and is nicknamed the Grand Canyon of Texas. Now while we're still in the Lone Star State we're going to visit Big Bend National Park. Now it's located near the Mexico border. Big Ben is a desert wonderland. The park includes the entire Chisos mountain range and is part of the Chihuahuan Desert. A notable spot is the Santa Elena Canyon with its steep limestone cliffs. I mean, it's definitely one of Texas' hidden treasures. Afterwards, we're gonna head over to Louisiana to visit New Orleans. Located right on the Mississippi River near the Gulf of Mexico, New Orleans is famous for its vibrant music scene, nightlife, and Cajun food. It's a melting pot of French, African, and American cultures. Now, one of the most famous events that takes place in New Orleans is the Mardi Gras, which is basically a big parade and party on the day before Ash Wednesday. After Louisiana, we're gonna head over to Atlanta. Now located in the state of Georgia, Atlanta is the state's capital and also where headquarters of Coca-Cola are located. Now if you want to escape the city and venture to Georgia's coast, you can visit the charming town of Savannah. Now located about a 4 hours drive from Atlanta, Savannah is the oldest city in Georgia. It was established back in 1733 and served as a strategic port during the American Revolution. I love its downtown with its preserved architecture. Now one of my favorite features of Savannah is its oak trees covered in Spanish moss. Now after, we're going to visit Nashville, Tennessee. If you love music, you gotta visit Nashville. It's a major center for the music industry, especially country music. Now while you're there, I recommend visiting Nashville's downtown and checking out all the great restaurants and venues. While we're still in Tennessee, we're going to head over to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Now located in both Tennessee and North Carolina, this is the most visited national park in the USA. 
which I found amusing. I mean, I guess people love the Smoky Mountains. This park is full of beautiful rolling mountains that look stunning during the fall time. I mean, it's a great place to hike and get lost in nature. Now after it, we're gonna head to North Carolina's coast to visit the Outer Banks. Popularized in Netflix hit show, the Outer Banks are a 200 mile set of barrier islands off the coast of North Carolina and Virginia. Back in the 1500s, English settlers came here, including the Roanoke colony, who mysteriously vanished in 1587. Today, the Outer Banks are a popular tourist destination to experience some of Carolina's best beaches. After it, we're gonna head over to Washington State. I was lucky enough to live here for almost a year, and it was a special time. I mean, there's just something about living near the Puget Sound and that Pacific Northwest weather that just creates a magical vibe. I live near this beautiful town called Gig Harbor. It's about an hour's drive from Seattle, and it's this beautiful harbor on the Puget Sound. You can check out the shops and restaurants and walk out on the docks. I mean, it's just such a beautiful place you gotta visit if you're in Washington. Now, after Gig Harbor, we're going to visit Seattle. I have to say that Seattle is one of my favorite favorite cities in the US. I just love how it's built right on the Puget Sound, contrasted with a skyline full of skyscrapers. Now one place you gotta visit if you're in Seattle is Pike's Place. It's a public market that has been open for more than 100 years. It's full of fresh produce stands, unique shops, and the world's first Starbucks. I just love all the colors, smells, and just all around vibe. Pike's Place is also home to the gum wall. It might gross you out, but at least it's full of colors. One thing I definitely recommend doing while you're near the Puget Sound is to take a ride on a ferry. You can drive your car on the ferry from Seattle and they can take you across the Puget Sound to Bainbridge Island or Bremerton. While you're on the ferry, you'll get picture perfect views of Seattle and it's overall such a good time. Afterwards, we're going to visit Mount Rainier. I may be a little biased, but I think Mount Rainier is one of the most stunning mountains in all the US. When you visit areas around Seattle, it's hard to believe how huge Mount Rainier is. It reminds me of a giant white Hershey's Kiss. If you want to see Mount Rainier up close and personal, you can visit the National Park and do numerous hikes around the area. Now another incredible volcano in Washington is Mount St. Helens. The behemoth stratovolcano stands at an elevation of 8,363 feet high and is currently active. On May 18, 1980, it erupted and was the deadliest and most economically destructive volcanic event in US history. Today it's still steaming. I just think it's one of the most beautiful mountains and a great reminder of how powerful nature can be. After we're going to head over to Montana to visit Glacier National Park, one of the most popular things you can do in the park is drive on the going to the sun road. It's this incredible route that cuts through the mountains and you'll have a high chance of seeing some wildlife. The first place I went to was the hike to the Hidden Lake Overlook. We parked at the Logan Pass Visitor Center and made the three mile round trip hike. I mean it was at the end of July and there was still a ton of snow up there which made the hike fun. The whole way is full of incredible views. We came across some marmots and a mountain goat. The overlook is absolutely stunning. The lake backdrop with the Bear Hat Mountain is just so unique. Now aside from Hidden Lake, there's just so many other places to explore. I mean, I'm barely scratching the surface. You could spend several weeks exploring all the treasures of this park. Now another beautiful place in Montana is Flathead Lake. It's about an hour outside of Glacier National Park and it's a great place to stay if you plan on going to Glacier. The lake is absolutely huge and the water is so clear and enjoyable to swim in during the summer months. We stayed at this incredible Airbnb right on the lake and we kayaked out to one of the islands. I mean it was just so nice to spend a few days here relaxing on the lake and I couldn't recommend it enough. After we're going to head down to Wyoming to visit Yellowstone National Park. Now one of the most famous places in Yellowstone is the Grand Prismatic Spring. It's the third largest hot spring in the world with a depth of 160 feet and from above it displays a remarkable rainbow color. You can walk on the platforms around the spring but you'll get the best view by taking the short hike up to the Grand Prismatic Spring Overlook. Another iconic spot in the park is Old Faithful. It's one of the world's most famous geysers because of its reliability. It erupts around every 90 minutes and the boiling water can reach 185 feet high. You can also make a drive out to the upper falls. It's one of the most powerful waterfalls I've ever seen. Another less popular but just as stunning spot is Mammoth Springs. I went there first thing in the morning and it was magical with all its mist coming off the hot spring terraces. Now while we're still in Wyoming, we're going to head over to the nearby Grand Tetons National Park. 
I have to say this is one of my favorite national parks. I just love the incredible scenery and the unique jagged shape of the Grand Tetons. I mean, there's tons of hikes to go on. One of my favorites is to Delta Lake. It's a somewhat challenging hike, but when you reach the top, you're rewarded with a blue Gatorade colored glacier lake that has the backdrop of the massive Grand Teton Peak. I was just hard to beat the location of the spot. When I went there, I just had to jump in the water. I have to say it was some of the coldest I've ever been in, but nothing makes you feel more alive than a polar plunge in some glacier water. Another one of my favorite places in Wyoming is Green River. It's a set of mountain lakes right in the Wind River Range. One of my favorite features of the area is the view of Score Top Mountain. It's this incredibly shaped peak that kind of reminds me of Half Dome in Yosemite. I mean, it's a great place to hike and enjoy some of Wyoming's raw nature. After it, we're gonna head over to Eastern Wyoming to visit Devil's Tower. Now, this is one of the most interesting rock formations in the US. The tower is 867 feet tall and sticks out like a sore thumb across the landscape. It's been a sacred place for Native Americans and it was made the first national monument back in 1906. I mean, what an incredible spot. Now, afterwards, we're gonna head over to nearby Mount Rushmore. Now, located about a two hours drive away in South Dakota, Mount Rushmore is one of the USA's most distinguishable features. It took 14 years to sculpt this memorial and was completed in 1941. The faces of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln are carved into the granite mountain. I mean, such an incredible feat if you ask me. Now, from Mount Rushmore, you can make the short drive over to Custer State Park this place is honestly stunning. I didn't know places like this existed in South Dakota. One of my favorite features of the park is the cathedral spires. They are such an incredible rock formation and just a short hike to get there. Now while we're still in South Dakota, we're going to head over to Badlands National Park. This 244 acre park is full of incredible canyons, pinnacles, and spires. I just love the range of colors in the layered rock. I think the best way to see the Badlands is just by driving through on the scenic byway. There's also plenty of hikes to explore this beautiful place. Now after, we're gonna head up to North Dakota. Now this may be one of the least visited states in the US, but it definitely has some charm. It's home to historical small towns and cities such as Fargo, which is the largest city in the state, also a great TV show. North Dakota is also home to plenty of wildlife such as bison and the black-tailed prairie dog. Now afterwards, we're gonna head over to Colorado. I think Colorado is one of the most beautiful states in the US. It's home to jagged Rocky Mountains, endless aspen trees, and great ski resorts. The capital city of Colorado is Denver. It's nicknamed the Mile High City with an official elevation of 5,280 feet above sea level. Now Denver is quite the city. I lived here for a few months and really enjoyed it. There's a lot going on. You can visit the historic Union Station or take a walk in its many parks. One thing that's great about Denver is that it's close to some really cool places. One amazing destination outside the city is Mount Evans. It's about a two hours drive from Denver and you'll be able to drive up the highest paved road in North America to an elevation of more than 14,000 feet. The views are incredible at top there and as you scale over 9,000 feet in elevation, you'll drive through five different climate zones. Now, if you're into history, you can stop at the Mesa Verde National Park. Now, it's located about a seven hours drive from Denver. Mesa Verde is home to the largest archeological preserve in the US. It's best known for its Cliff Palace, which is built back in the 12th century. Now afterwards, we're going to explore Monument Valley. Now located right on the Arizona-Utah border, Monument Valley is known for its towering sandstone buttes. It is often the backdrop to many movies, and it's hard to believe how tall these buttes are until you see them in person. They tower a whopping 1,000 feet above the desert floor. Navajo legend describes these buttes as carcasses of past defeated monsters. Now one of the best views of Monument Valley is at Forrest Gump's Point. You'll get that iconic shot where Forrest decided to end his run. Now afterwards, we're going to visit the Grand Canyon, known as one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It's a one mile deep, 277 mile long gorge that has been carved and sculpted by the Colorado River. The Grand Canyon is home to endless activities and forms of exploration. Nearly 5.5 million people come to visit this canyon every year, and it's easy to see why. While we're still in Arizona, we're going to visit Sedona. Now, located in the north of the state, about 50 minute drive outside of Flagstaff, Sedona is the perfect mixture of red rock with green pine forest. 
One thing interesting about Sedona is that it's believed to be home to vortexes, which are centers of energy that are perfect for meditation, self-exploration, and yoga. All of Sedona is considered a vortex, but one of the strong centers of energy is at the vortex of Bell Rock, People claim that there's just something magical that energizes you as you hike the rock. Even if you're not into vortexes and meditation, Sedona is a great place to go hiking and do other outdoor sports, which is such a special place. Afterwards, we're going to head to New Mexico to visit Ship Rock. Now, this may be one of the most random and unique rock structures I've ever seen. Me and my brother went here a few weeks ago and it lived up to the hype. What I think is so interesting about Ship Rock is the volcanic spines that lead up to it. They are just these massive rock walls that seem to go on forever. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. The rock is sacred to the Navajos. They named it the Rock with Wings. Now from far away, the rock doesn't look that big, but up close, it's huge with a height of 1,583 feet. I mean, just such a bizarre place. Now after, we're gonna head over to New Mexico's capital, Albuquerque. If any of you are Breaking Bad fans, you'll know the iconic series was filmed here. One thing that I think is awesome that they do in Albuquerque is hold an international balloon fiesta, which happens during the first week of October. I mean, such a beautiful sight that fills up the New Mexico horizon. Now, another beautiful place in New Mexico is White Sands National Park. I mean, I've seen a lot of sand dunes in my life, but what makes these ones special is their striking white color. Located about a three hours drive from Albuquerque, the dunes are made up of the mineral called gypsum, which gives them their unique color. If you ever find yourself in Southern Mexico, make sure to visit this national park. Now afterwards, we're gonna head over to Las Vegas. Now located in the very southern tip of Nevada, Las Vegas is known all over the world for its flashy hotels and endless casinos. It's this massive city that's built right in the middle of the desert. When you visit, you can take a drive down the strip or visit some of the country's biggest casino hotels. If you want to escape the city, you can venture out to the Valley of Fire State Park. It's located about a 45 minute drive outside Las Vegas and it's home to striking red rock formations and what an incredible place. Now afterwards, we're gonna visit Los Angeles. Now located in Southern California, about a five hours drive from Las Vegas, Los Angeles is the second most populous city in the US. It's famous for its Mediterranean climate, diversity, and it's basically the capital of the entertainment industry. I personally don't love LA, but there are a lot of amazing things to do there. You can visit the Griffith Observatory to get great views of the city, or go check out the Santa Monica Pier. Now from LA, you can head into the California desert to visit the Trona Pinnacles. Now located about a three hours drive outside of LA, the Trona Pinnacles are made up of over 500 rock spires with some over 140 feet high. I mean, it's an alien landscape out there. Definitely worth checking out. After, we're gonna head up to Idaho to visit the Sawtooth Mountain Range. Now located in central Idaho, the Sawtooths are incredible mountains named for their jagged peaks. Me and my buddy Jake did a backpacking trip here and it was an incredible experience. We started our trip at Redfish Lake and took the last boat ride over to start our 8.6 mile round trip hike to Saddleback Lake and we got there while it was dark. But when I woke up, I couldn't believe the view. We were right next to a giant rock wall and pristine lakes. I just couldn't believe how blue and clear the water was. I had a great time going for a morning swim and I found this perfect spot to do some cliff jumps. I mean, it's just hard to beat the feeling of being deep in the mountains, enjoying some alpine lakes. The Satus are such a magical place. Another cool place in Idaho is the St. Anthony Sand Dunes. I mean, this place is bizarre. It's over 10,000 acres of sand dunes right next to some farmland. I mean, it just feels so out of place. But the whole area is the ultimate playground. Some of the dunes reach 400 feet high. Now, if you love riding dune buggies or dirt bikes, this is the place you gotta go. My grandparents live nearby, so I've come here many times. Whenever I'm here, I feel like I'm in Dubai or somewhere exotic. It's just such an epic place you gotta visit if you're ever in Idaho. While we're still in Idaho, we're going to head over to Shoshone Falls. Now, located on the Snake River, Shoshone Falls is referred to as the Niagara Falls of the West and is 212 feet high and over 1,000 feet wide. You can park right by it so it's not too difficult to get to. I mean, honestly, it's such an incredible place you got to visit if you're in Idaho. 
Now after Idaho, we're going down to Utah to visit the famous Bonneville Salt Flats. The Salt Flats are located about two hours west of Salt Lake City. It's one of the craziest locations in Utah and the world. It's basically 30,000 acres of mud covered in a layer of salt. There's no vegetation, so all you see is white and the surrounding mountains. The Salt Flats have been featured in many music videos and movies such as Pirates of the Caribbean. I love coming out here and just messing around on the salt, whether it's setting up a tramp on the salt flats or jumping over my car since the salt is completely flat the world's fastest land record has been set here if you do go be cautious about driving on the salt because you can sink your car if the salt isn't dry now when it rains the salt flats become the world's largest mirror and it's just a truly a surreal place that you have to visit if you're ever in utah after we're going to head down to moab Located in Utah, this may be one of the best places to go if you want to be at the center of the action. There's so many things and places around Moab you can do and explore. One of my favorites is the Fisher Towers. It's just about a 40 minutes drive outside of Moab. It's home to the Titan Tower, which is claimed to be the largest freestanding rock tower in the US with a prominence of 700 feet. I mean, freaking crazy. You can do about a four mile round trip hike and experience all the towers from below. I mean, just such a cool hike with incredible views. Also, there's the nearby Castle Valley, which is home to impressive mesas in the Castleton Tower. Now, another cool spot right outside of Moab is Corona Arch. I remember the first time I saw this place was in Devon Supertramp's video where they made a giant rope swing off of it. Now, to get to the arch, it's a fairly easy hike of 2.4 miles round trip. If you want to avoid the heat, I recommend doing the hike early in the morning or in the evening. I mean, it's just such a beautiful arch. When you stand under it, you realize how huge it is. The nearest national park to Moab is Arches. It's located just a few minutes outside the city. It's home to one of Utah's most iconic symbols, the Delicate Arch. Now to get to the Delicate Arch, it's about a three mile round trip hike. When I reached the arch, I was just amazed how huge it actually was. I just had a good time exploring the area and witnessing one of Utah's most famous locations. Arches National Park is also home to more beautiful rock formations that you have to check out. Now after, we're going to visit Zion National Park. Now Zion is just out of this world. Pictures and videos don't do it justice. It's home to steep red rock cliffs that are thousands of feet high. One of my favorite and most famous places in Zion is the hike to Angel's Landing. It's about a five mile round trip hike that's famous for its sketchy chain trail. We crossed the bridge over the Virgin River and headed up the trail. We hiked up some steep switchbacks until we reached the top. Angel's Landing is famous for its thousand foot drop offs and chains that lead the way. I did the hike in the winter, so it was icy at times. I bought my 360 camera so I could get every possible angle up the trail. I was able to reach the top and the view just blew my mind. I was able to see all of Zion's Canyon. I was just surreal. If you can handle the heights, I hope you can hike Angel's Landing sometime in your life. Afterwards, we're going to visit Bryce Canyon National Park. Located about a two hours drive from Zion, Bryce Canyon is famous for its crimson colored hoodoos. There are more hoodoos here than anywhere else on earth. When you visit Bryce Canyon, the best viewpoints are on its rim of the amphitheater, such as Sunrise and Sunset Point. You can also hike down the canyon to get up close and personal with the hoodoos. If you come in the wintertime, the white snow contrasted with the orange rock creates an incredible sight. Definitely add this to your USA bucket list. After, we're going to head over to the Florida Keys. So the Florida Keys are a Coral Cay archipelago located right off of southern Florida. It's basically the American version of the Bahamas. What's really impressive is that all the islands are connected by a road, making it one of the coolest drives in the US. I was out in Florida and I really wanted to drive all the way to the end of the Keys. When you drive on the bridges, you'll be able to see the blue Caribbean Sea. One of the most impressive ones is the Seven Mile Bridge. At the time of its construction, it was one of the longest bridges in the world. I mean, it just looks like it never ends. The final destination on the Keys takes you to the city of Key West. It's the most southern place in the continental US. After the Keys, we're going to visit Miami. Now, located in southeastern Florida, Miami has a lot going on. If you love warm weather, amazing beaches, and a great nightlife, you gotta give Miami a visit. Summers may be hot and humid here, but it's a great place to come during the winter months. Another one of Florida's major cities is Orlando. Now located in central Florida, Orlando is one of the most visited cities in the world thanks to more than a dozen theme parks. One of my favorites is Universal Orlando. I really wanted to come to visit Harry Potter World. You can experience the magic of Hogwarts or take a walk down Diagon Alley. 
Just make sure to watch out for the fire breathing dragon. Afterwards, we're going to visit historic St. Augustine. Founded all the way back in 1565, St. Augustine claims to be the oldest city in the USA. It was settled by a Spanish conquistador and was the capital of Spanish Florida for 200 years. Today, the city is full of history. Now, afterwards, we're going to head back up to Alaska to visit Anchorage. Now located on a peninsula in the Cook Inlet, Anchorage is the largest city in Alaska with over 40% of the population living there. One cool thing about Anchorage is that it's equal distances to cities such as Tokyo, Frankfurt, and New York, and it is a 10 hour flight from 90% of the industrialized world, making it a major hub for international cargo flights. Now from Anchorage, you can make the two hour drive to one of the most wild places in Alaska, Denali National Park. It's home to the Denali Mountain, which is not only the highest point in North America, but it's also the third most prominent and isolated peak in the world. I mean, it's just a behemoth of a mountain. Now, after Alaska, we're gonna head back to Hawaii to visit the Big Island. Now, also known as the Island of Hawaii, this is the largest and youngest of the Hawaiian Islands. It's also the most volcanically active, so you gotta check out the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. If you can, I definitely recommend taking a helicopter flight to see the volcanoes from above, or you can take a boat tour to see the lava from the sea. I mean, just such an unbelievable place. Now, the next island over is Maui. If you want to relax and just have a good time, Maui is the place to go. It's full of incredible resorts, beaches, and snorkeling spots. One of my favorites is Black Rock Beach. It's this great beach located by some resorts, and what I like about it is there's a fun cliff jump spot. It's also a great place to snorkel, and you might even see some turtles while you're there. You can also visit the Haleakala National Park to experience the sunrise or sunset at 10,000 feet high. Now for our final destination, we're going to visit the island of Oahu. Now of all the islands in Hawaii, I have to say that Oahu is my favorite. I lived here for almost a year, and it was just some of the greatest times of my life. I mean, if you love hiking, surfing, and adventures, Oahu is the place for you. One of the most popular places on Oahu is Waikiki. It's the perfect combination of city and ocean. The beach is lined with high-rise hotels and shops. It is a perfect place to surf and catch some waves. Another one of the most famous places on Oahu is the North Shore. The North Shore is 17 miles of coastline that is home to some of the greatest surfing in the world. One of the most well-known beaches on the North Shore is the Bonsai Pipeline. The waves are created by a super sharp and dangerous reef that causes the waves to break just right. During the winter months, some of the most popular surfing competitions are held here and the waves can reach over 20 feet high. If you get a chance, you gotta visit Hawaii at least once in your life. There's just something magical about those islands. Well, that is it for my USA Top 100. Let me know where your favorite place is in the USA in the comments below. I also started a relaxation channel, bring some peace and nature in your life. I did a film on the USA and I think you'll really enjoy it. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at shirley.films. It's Ryan and we will see you later.